Renat Brodac. It's a bittersweet moment for uh, you this week on Making the Cut. Uh, you're celebrating your first assignment win, uh, so your streetwear coat is being sold on Amazon, and I am seriously considering buying it myself. Uh, <laughs> I, I sizes are running out. I think there's only like the smaller sizes left. Oh, okay, so I'll get on that. Um, you know, uh, but uh, unfortunately, you were eliminated in the next challenge, but let's start with the, that good news, um, which is that really cool wrap coat with the mixed prints, um, uh, which was one of your winning looks along with that uh, really cool uh, runway look. Uh, were you confident you had the winning looks when they went down that escalator, or is it always a question mark going before the judges? Um, I was very confident on my designs. For episode five, I remember like behind the scenes because every fashion show that we would have, they would put us in like this back room, um, so we don't see anything. Nobody sees us. And I remember Sander couldn't stop. Like you got this, you're winning, you're winning. I'm like, how do you know? And he was like, I just know it, you're winning. And I'm like, okay, like I didn't like really think about it too much, but I was very confident with what I designed according to the assignment and according to like what it, how it felt to me. It felt good, so it felt like it was in the right spot. And I'll talk a little bit about that sort of you, you, that anti-fashion idea that you sort of had from the streets of Tokyo with those clashing prints that you know you know, could go either way, but they came out really polished and really together. Um, so like I went to Cat Street in Harajuku for my inspiration, and I gather inspiration from you know just different emotions, current events, people watching, you know, absorbing. I love people watching, by the way. Um, and then uh, I was walking down Cat Street, and I like saw a lot of Japanese people, and it was more like a hipster, grungy vibe. But you know, most of them were like in their looks, so walking down the streets. Like they had mix and match like patterns and colors and you know flannel and stripes and just like different things mix and match with tie dyes and you know it kind of hit me and I was like wow this is a huge anti fashion moment in my opinion because and it kind of connects with my brand of being gender free and being who you are it connects in a way where you know the, this person is getting dressed in the morning doesn't give a fuck about what people think but they feel good and confident and they let leave their place and they have a beautiful day. And uh, what was it like going straight from those the four assignments in Paris, going straight to Tokyo, and then and having to have more creative inspiration, and then do all that work in two days on the spot? Was that was that more challenging uh, after? You know, um well, like, I, I, I used to live in Paris. So, you know, when I went to Paris, it was great. I was like, oh, it's almost like I'm back home. But then when they told us episode four, we're going to Tokyo, I lost it. Like Tokyo has been on my list for years, not just because of the amazing fashion that happens there. But, you know, I love Japanese food and their culture is so interesting. And just everything in, in the design world with the Japanese is so beautiful. So when they said that we're going to Tokyo, I lost my shit. And <laughs> Finally, I was just like, wow, we're going to a place I've never been. And it was just very exciting. And it was so inspiring to just be there and, you know, the different fashion. And it was just, I, I have no words to explain, like, how happy I was during that time. It literally felt like I was high on drugs. Uh, and you did get that great advice from Tim uh, uh, on, on your coat <laughs> to add that sort of second color to the collar. Uh, like, did that sort of snap everything into place? Because it does give it that really amazing bold pop when it came down. I'm so happy I, lis I listened to Tim when it came with the coats. Um, you know, Tim is amazing, amazing human being. He's the perfect mentor. And I think as a designer, you know, your eyes are constantly looking at what you're designing and you always need um, a pair of fresh eyes. Like, you know, you, you need that. And I think Tim's role as the mentor in the show is just so genius. Like he is so down to earth. He's amazing. He'll tell you, it, he'll tell you the, the truth, how it is. And it's just amazing to have that, you know, that fresh pair of eyes to give it to you. And AKA being Tim Gunn, like it was everything. This guy has so much experience and he knows so much about fashion and from any aspect of fashion this guy knows about. So it was very, it was amazing having him along. And I needed those eyes because I think that was a really game changer for me when I changed the facing the blue plaid. And being in, in Paris and Tokyo, and then also being surrounded by this really international coalition of, of designers who are competing on the show, like, has, has that inspired you uh, as a designer, like, going forward? Have you taken a lot of those influences into who you are as a designer? 
So um, I love the fact that like it was via contestants. It was very global. Um, I kind of view myself as a global person too. You know, I left Israel. I moved to San Francisco to school. I moved to Paris. I moved to New York after Paris. And I feel like a lot of people that I have in my life are very global. They've been to many places. They've traveled. They have that experience. And it was just so amazing to have this group of people with me around me because it's not every day you get to meet to meet genuine people aka designers from all over the world and it just had this sense of community like a worldwide community and it was amazing i was so happy to have everybody from all over the world they really did a good job of selecting each one of us um you know it's a very amazing great and eclectic group and i think nobody is alike and they did they did an amazing job on casting and uh, what was it like going from that streetwear challenge, uh, going on that high to the opposing forces challenge? Uh, where things unfortunately didn't end as well, but like, like, is the pressure on? Do you know, like, okay, now they see me, I, I won this challenge, I got to bring it again. Do you, know, do you know that feeling of like, after you accomplish something big, it's like you have that high and then there's like a low. And I, I just remember the day after my win, this like, I, um, I call it, um, I call it director's flu syndrome. Basically, it's like after you're working on something for so long and then, you know, it's released and then all the air out of you is taken. And that's kind of how I felt when it came to episode six. And, you know, I still gave it 150% of me and I did the best that I could. And I told myself, you're going to keep pushing yourself. You're going to keep pushing yourself outside of the box to really, you know, keep embracing that discomfort and you're going to do the best you can. And I don't have regrets on it. And, you know, what I can take from this is that taste is a very individual thing and it's okay if we don't like the same things, we're all individuals. And I think that's what, make, that's what makes us perfect. I think that's what makes making the cut amazing because we're all individuals and we all have different points of view and different taste levels. And uh, what do you take from this experience going forward, building your brand, uh, you know, artistically, creatively? What, what did what did you, you know, learn from making the cut that you think is um, going to build you up? Well, I think some big things that I learned from making the cut, you know, number one, I really embraced um, using color <laughs> and mixing patterns. So that is something that, um, we are within the brand. They're going to continue exploring. Um, we are working on, you know, another capsule, uh, no, sorry, not capsule collection. We're working on another collection, um, moving forward with the gender free, going into a more streetwear, sportswear kind of vibe. Um, you know, I learned from this show that I can take these amazing, I don't know if you want to call them crazy, but take these like drape shapes that I do but you know I'm not talking about dumbing it down I'm talking about you know how can I make this accessible for you know normal people out there in the world and I think you know by taking by making taking my silhouettes and making it in a knit jersey or in a different fabric or adding like a small element of like you know everyday clothing I think that's what makes it special and I've learned that from making the cut of you know being just being more branded if I make sense Oh yeah, totally. And uh, what I love about the gender-free aesthetic uh, is that as a as a man watching uh, fashion competition shows, they're very often slanted towards female fashion. And yeah. I love the idea of seeing things like, oh, I could see myself in that. As I mentioned, I can see myself in your coat. And if they're still available, I might see myself in your coat. Um, uh, like, where did that uh, gender-free aesthetic uh, sort of that inspiration come from in your in your life and your career? Um, so I have a lot of friends within the LGBTQI, um, and you know, I've, people have always been, even I started off my brand as a women's wear brand and everybody was just wearing my, like from my friends and two and a half years ago, I had an unfortunate incident with, you know, financial, financially, I was like really down and then I started listening, you know, I just start really going from scratch with my brand and I was listening more to my heart and being real and raw. And I told myself that I'm going to go to my own um, drum beats and not listen to, you know, what people have to say or the industry. And the response was good. And, you know, I wanted to be real and raw in the sense where fashion is not just for the rich and skinny. You know, fashion should be for everybody, you know, regardless your your financial situation, regardless your body shape, where you're from, what you what you identify as, what you do in the bedroom. None of those things matter. You know, I create clothing 
I create more than just clothing. I create tools for people to be who they are and express themselves. So if you want to express yourself in a dress, do it. More power to you. You know, you want to express yourself in some menswear look, go ahead. I think it's, you know, it's all about being who we are. And I think a lot, not a lot of people get to express really who they are. If you want to go to like stories about children that are gender fluid, that are coming out in schools in America. And it's some, it, unfortunately, some of them end up with suicide and, you know, there's all these stories out there. And, you know, if I could help people with, with uh, the, the clothing and the brand, then uh, that, that's, that's my, that's my goal to make people comfortable and make them be who, make them realize who they are and be chic and you know, making people happy and giving is something, you know, really big on my end. So. Well, uh, congratulations on that winning look and on your experience overall on making the cut. Uh, looking forward to seeing more of you in the fashion world on red carpets. On, on you show. will. Listen, the world will definitely keep seeing who Rina Brodach is. I'm not worried about that. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate you. Be safe. You too. Bye.